Welcome to Eminence TV Live, our weekly rundown of tournament CEDH and what's going on in the CEDH community. I'm Scoots, and I'm joined by Jamaican Dude from Playing With Power, and Greg, aka Curious Control, is here with us, and we'll talk more to him later. <clears throat> We'd like to thank our sponsors, Moxfield and the Epic Storm, without whom this wouldn't be so amazing. If you're enjoying Eminence content and would like to see more, please consider subscribing here on Twitch. If you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to one channel a month for free, and we'd love it if you'd consider using that on us. This week, we're talking to Greg. Greg's here. We're going to talk about control in CEDH and other things. And we're going to go over the events that are coming up, a little bit of the CEDH subreddit rundown, and maybe have some other fun chats that are secrets. Uh, speaking of events coming up... Uh, Eminence events, January 13th through 15th in San Jose, California. We have si Silicon Dynasty, which is our first West Coast event. And then March 24th through 26th in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, we have Punt City 2, which I'm super excited for. I think it's going to be a great time, and I hope to see everyone there. Um, and then I read this very annoying Discord alert. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, coming up in other news, we have uh, Okotoberfest. That's coming up soon, I think. Um, congrats. I, I, I think that'll be really cool. I think a lot of people are going to go. That's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we have the uh, Commander Summit coming up in Salt Lake City, Utah, November 11th through 13th. And that's hosted by the fine folks over at Kingdoms TV. Um, Greg, Ashani, how you doing today? Oh, I, uh, I'm well. You're well. Okay, excellent. Yeah, great. Having a great time. We How have you, uh, in the chat. We have a uh, refresh, repost. If Greg, ten out of ten, recommend Greg. Okay, excellent. Um, I'm doing. I'm doing good. Uh, I have had a uh, a lovely week. Uh, I fell down yesterday, which is really good. Um, you all right? Oh yeah, I'm totally good. I'm totally fine. I just uh it's been it's been a week. Uh and I'm glad to be here at the start of another week uh with you all. My jaw still really hurts, but I'm going to see the special jaw doctor soon. I love you too, Buff Town Bullies. You're the best. Uh I know this because I've eaten barbecue with you, and so that confirms it. Um Mm -hmm. What did you guys have going on this week? Any interesting games? Any any fun things that you did? Oh, uh, uh -huh. not, not really. <laughs> School homework. Mm. I, uh, yeah. Spent like nine hours working on a bunch of assets for the podcast. I'm going to be starting in the middle of October. Nice, so, nice. Um, you want to spoil yeah. anything about that now? Uh, just that I have some really cool people lined up for the first few episodes and I haven't figured out anything else past that, but, um, we'll see how long I can ride this uh, high of motivation. So nice. Um, I hope it works out and you do it forever. I never, mm -hmm. I never, ever, ever. Uh, I never, ever, ever. Yeah. Um, I have been doing stuff. I've been doing stuff. Uh, we had a very excited draft Saturday that I was not there for, so that's kind of poopy. <laughs> I, I did watch it, and it seemed it was fun. Um, we had a draft in the Cabal. We, we have split up the Cabal, and we had a cool draft to help tournament preparations. I thought the idea was cool. Um... I was surprisingly first pick of you were like your first pick overall to fifty two <sighs> participants. Fifty two participants. I was first pick. I thought that was very exciting. I did not expect that. I thought I would go like in the thirties or something. Uh, I saw you going in the first ten. Yeah. So that that part was cool. Um, then. Uh, playing, going back to my roots on decks because I think I've been playing too many different decks. So I went back to Jund because sadly I think Get Wrong is not playable anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went back to Jund. 
uh, did some things with Corvold. Uh, playing both Blast and Corvold, I have so come to peer pressure. And now I'm playing Pyro Blast and Red Blast. And Dole said in defense grid. So yeah. I don't see until you run uh, guttural response. Actually, that will never happen. That, yeah, don't, that, yeah. <laughs> don't get on guttural response, but no, blast no, no. Okay. Yeah, I didn't did play the blast for like a solid yeah. year. So if, if you on. can justify guttural response, you can justify seed time. So uh, Ooh, well, I, hold on. <laughs> we, we Craig, have one. You, bring, you bring up a point, Craig. Ashani, why aren't you on seed time? I mean, we have ones went down that rabbit hole's cut, and <laughs> yeah, those were yeah. good days. Well, those are good days that we have graduated from such cards. But LJ's um, still on that in Edric. Is he? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. LG is a bad man, but whatever, whatever suits his journey through that bad deck he plays. But um, yes, no, not bad deck. Great deck. Great deck. Edric turns great deck. Um. But yeah, on life aspect, um, weekend was cool. I uh, MC for this party, and um, at a university. Um, I MC'd don't know. how. Um, I was help. Just I was a hype man for this party. Oh, you were a hype man. Yeah, um, I don't know if they knew what they signed up for, but um, it was cool. It was cool. It was Good. definitely a lot of Middle Eastern guys in Kentucky. Okay, all right. Um, and, and you were, you were yeah, the guy uh, who yells in the back of the rap video. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right. Ah, uh, you know what, Scott? That was very Caucasian of you. And I will be changing the topic. Oh, wow. All right. Okay. All right. Well. The guy look at, who. Look at this. Who shouts in the back of the rap video. Hey, All that's right. the only thing uh, I know MC from, okay? Listen, I'm right. sheltered and problematic. Uh, <laughs> I didn't play a ton of games this week either. Um, I switched from Blue Farm to Najila because Blue Farm is the worst deck in the format. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm trying mm -hmm. out Najila for a little bit, which is Najeela? frustrating because, um, Najila gets removed all the time. Oh, Mike, our feelers director had a baby, a beautiful son, a handsome, a handsome baby boy, um, who is, as I understand it, the biggest baby I've ever seen in my entire life, like eight pounds, something. Oh my God. Which is a big, a big lad. Uh, a big boy, big boy. But yeah, got his dad jeans in him, definitely. Yeah, yeah. All of us here are super happy for Mike, and uh, can't wait to see more pictures of the boy as he grows. For the safety of the family, I will not be leaking his name. Um, but uh, where did my show notes go? There they are. <laughs> hey. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the competitive EDH community. And by that, I mean this subreddit where the greatest minds assemble. My jaw is killing me. I'm so sorry that it keeps popping. Uh, first of all, uh, Sean, you ran us down with this lovely thing first. Um, I yes. love playing against Stack so much. Um, hmm. It's it says here... It was a cool one. This person says, I know most CEDH players won't have much bad things to say about stacks, but as someone who's been climbing out of casual commander and into CEDH territory, I don't get why casuals hate stacks so much. It's a four-person game. If I was upset every time someone stopped me from playing my deck, I would just goldfish all day long. I genuinely think my favorite games of Magic have been when I go up against stacks or get through an attempt for someone to stop me before I win. Stop taking your removal to kill the Drenith and cast your commander and win feels so thrilling in a game. It's like a puzzle you need to solve. I think commander just gets so much more fun to play when there is constant interaction, and it's not just a race to outpace your opponents. How do we feel yeah. about that? What do you think, Greg? Uh, about stacks in CDH? Oh, uh, about how this guy feels about stacks, or maybe your views on stacks. 
Uh, I actually kind of zoned out because I was trying to bring up r slash cdh and then trying to figure out my login. To That's Reddit, totally I'm, fair. I'm, I'm not That's a big fine. person. So. Listen, I will I will do this. Um, while I talk, I will send you the thing, so you I, can. I actually I just found it. I love. All right, uh, cool. So much. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Really oh, cool. But um, while you're reading it, I I thought it was a cool thing because. Stacks, you know, everyone moans and groans when there's a rule of law effect comes down or three ball or whatever that doesn't allow you to play magic. But, and then you just gripe about it. But what about how this person looked at it? And I, and I share his joy when you get to solve the puzzle at the end of the day and the stack player doesn't win. And that brings me great joy. What part actually brings you the joy, though? Is it the stacks player not winning, or? Yeah, that's what that brings me the joy. Yeah, Correct. yeah, okay. absolutely, All right. absolutely. All right, a little um, bit of an ulterior motive on your enjoyment. Of yeah, no, definitely, definitely. But it does bring a nice, nice uh, feeling to it. Well, how do you feel, Greg? So reading this over, I actually, I, I like playing against stacks, um, simply because. Control and Reactive has a really good time into those uh, those decks. The only pieces that they run that actually stop me are like, I got, I think it's Spirit of the Labyrinth that prevents you from drawing multiple cards a turn, and it's just mm-hmm. those effects. Like I, I actually, I actively want like a turn one Draineth, or I want the turn one Rule of Law to come out mm-hmm. because I'll just sit there and I'll make my land drops and I'll have a great time, and just watching the the life get sucked out of a Nas player right when the turn one rule of law comes down it's the best feeling in the world and i know for a fact that if the game is going to go to like turn 11 like my win rate's going up so i don't i don't mind playing against stacks i'll eventually draw into my out which is usually a toxic deluge or a cyclonic rift or one of those kinds of well greg Greg it's also a little toxic i see yeah greg's a little toxic but also he described almost perfectly my first game in the last chaos tournament Wherein I was playing Blue Farm and had the turn one intuition into a turn two breach win. And the player before yeah. me played the Eidolon of Rhetoric and I cried. It's brutal, but like, I'm not, I'm not on Nas. I'm not on like rituals. I'm not on anything that I really mm-hmm. want to chain out. I'm fine just sitting there stalling. And so I, I have no issue playing against stacks. I actually think it's a great time because we just get to sit and hang out. I see. I'm not. I'm here for the hang. I'm just here to hang while playing multiple games. You know, that that is my that's my hang. But yeah, I thought it was a cool thing and maybe give us a little more light on what we eventually going to talk to Greg about because I think we have a lot of views on what to do with the dolls because dolls is the the go to. You know, the glory boy of all things. Uh, you know, I want to add nauseam on turn two and win the game and yes. take a 20 minute turn. And this is the highlight of it. But what about the people who just like to take it slow? What about the control tempo players that want to play for two hours and make very limited mistakes and well, they sit and watch you suffer. There's that kind of fun too. Not a part of it, not my kind of fun, but hey. It's like my kind of game. I mean, okay. So it's well, not that the enjoyment of playing stacks or playing, I guess, control is not sitting there and um, stalling. The decisions that you make in control are, um, they're not as immediately impactful. And so you have to sit there and you have to think about your decisions because if you have two counter spells in hand, right, you can stop two win attempts. Um, and you really have to sit there and think, like, can I force one of my opponents to stop this one attempt? Like, mm-hmm. and really, you just want to be the last person to use your interaction, even though yep. most of the time people pass priority to you. Um, you can be super greedy and just let stuff resolve until the game winning spell. Um, and it's a lot of psychological warfare against opponents, but mm-hmm. honestly, the the fun part of control is just making decisions because uh, there are a lot of them and the mistakes you make, they you don't feel the repercussions of those mistakes until four or five turns down the line. So, and we're going to uh, talk really more about that plan ahead. Oh, in yeah, a little bit. No, it's, it was good. Good points. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Um, okay. Oh. Uh, 
Our second one is... Well, I have one that I wanted to bring up in between. Um, oh, okay. Did what you, you see on the subreddit the person who said that they disliked playing against Blood Moon so much that they wanted to switch to entirely basic lands? I, 14 of each basic and cut I, did packed. Did you see I that? Did, I did read that one, and I gave it a look-see, and I'm like... To be nice, no. I'm, I'm just not going to encourage it, but, yeah. like, I get it. I get it. It felt bad that he didn't get to play spells, and yeah. I think he really wanted to play spells. But I remember playing uh, Hermit Druid, right, in the days of Blood Moon. Yeah, Moves Blood Moon, yeah. It was and pretty, pretty Rejoicing rough. when Force of Vigor got released in Modern Horizons 1. Like, I finally have an out to Blood Moon. It was, it was good, but, um... What about just play red and play one of each basic and hey, you'll get there. And yeah, just resolve the dark side and you'll eventually win. That is that is the beauty of it. I, but yeah, I, saw, I, did win it. I saw someone posting the other day that they had basics in their deck to avoid Blood Moon and one of their basics was a basic mountain. That doesn't work. It's always but. the worst. But maybe he does play the cause of the foily pretty mountain. Well, what I what I think honestly is that this br brings us into a bigger problem, which is um just how inbred CEDH mana bases are and have been over the years. Yes, mm -hmm. I think. Very if, true. Uh, by the way, CEDH budget Bruce, thank you for the hundred bits and a very timely. Um, Timmy is one of those people who has been helping people develop their mana bases for years and years and years and. To make them better and to make them able to play spells on curve and um i i think that going to someone like timmy and asking for help if you're if you're just throwing uh a bunch of of lands into something and and hoping that it works like i think that there needs to be a significant amount more consideration on mana bases and playing things on curve and i think some of the work that i've seen into like um roger silas or or blue farm where they're taking like uh, long looks at things and running more talismans and city of traders to enable those and uh, taking looks at, like how, how their mana is being produced, even down to like Thrasios and Tumna turbo list. Some of them are on that uh, Golgari talisman now because they find they need black for ad nause. Yeah. I really like Definitely. the new school. They already be on talisman of dominance. Cause yeah, they're on dominance oh, okay, and yeah. they'll be in there on the, uh, I I think I love the new school um the new school considerations on like uh mana base uh pips in the deck, some of the more mathy things that are happening happening on like land counts and and colored pips in the deck. I think it's really really cool and it's a big heady thing to get into. And I'm glad that people like uh Bryant and Viverus and Timmy. And Eric and Rocket and those people are making considered decisions on those things so that I don't have to figure it out. It's like uh agreed. It's pretty I cool. mean for I guess for the CDH community, I'm I'm not gonna say long balls all together, but I've been using the same meta base for like yeah almost any deck for the last two, three years. It's like the same tainted mana base, or I'm like, all right, this may be not playing right. I just sent all my mana base to Timmy. That's yeah. been my it's been my go to for a solid two years. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I yeah. Timmy, I'm gonna slide into your DMs after this Twitch stream because I need oh, to know. Yeah. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy is a wizard at it. M Benny six two five. Thank you for the gift sub to I rage your fridge, Guayando. Uh, Thank you for the sub. But yeah, no, that's that's literally what's been going on for mana bases for me for yeah. a while. But um, no, a lot of um, since the 60 card guys came in, they look at the mana base and they're like, this is horrendous. I'm like, listen, don't look over there. That does not matter. Please look it's at the fine. It's fine. And <laughs> please no, look at the cool. Exactly. Look at the cool things I can do. Please yeah. do not look at my mana base. Please don't. Please don't look. At, I actually made a comment about someone's mana base the other day, and they were like, "Dude, I threw thirty lands in there. Please don't. Please don't." And I was like, "No, but this is important." It is. You have to cast your spells. They say, "I don't know my spells cast on their own, good sir. I don't need it." <laughs> actually, funny. The only lands in my deck, and 
the curious control version that I'm playing right now that don't tap for blue are like Badlands, Bayou, and Besiege you, and everything else taps for at least a blue pip because yeah. that's just what's important in that deck. But it was so hard trying to convince myself to get off of Overgrown Tomb because it was like it's just another fetchable land and it's it's great, right? But yeah. No, I you've got to focus on what you can cast, and yeah. so having your mana base reflect that is super important. I saw a so, video the other day. I think it was that if you have like a thing that costs double white in your deck. You need like I have something like twenty three white pips in your various sources of mana to reliably cast it on curve. Mm. But that was for sixty card calculations, and then we're moving to a hundred, and it's even heavier. It's all singletons. How do you think I feel about running like Niv Mizzet on curve? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a challenge, but I made it work. It's a, you do it with Dockside, yeah. Exactly. Everything yeah. Dockside fix. So Chicken um, said, I agree. I agree, but he often seen control decks play 29 lands, and I went back to a little Urza, and it was playing 32 lands, mm -hmm. and I thought that was way too many. Um, because I just think the commander itself. I think there's some control list. I don't. How much are you playing, Greg? Uh, in my list, I'm on twenty nine lands. So yeah, and I think I in Urza went down to twenty seven, but that's like because I'm just also a madman. So yeah, definitely you are take, a lunatic. Yeah. But also, they're all yeah. blue, right? Like they're all blue, and like I'm like Urza makes mana. Like, why do I need thirty two lands? Yeah. This is not correct. Sick by any means. Sick, ro Sick Robot in the chat says, currently on 30 in Thrast Timna because Cradle doesn't count for openers. I'm uh, uh, I'm moving in that direction. I've been on 28 in Thrast Timna for a while. And uh, two of my lands are Odawara or, or Bosejo and Cradle. So yeah. realistically, I'm running 26 lands, right? And I, I've been thinking I need to find cuts for... Oh. Yeah. You might just have to, to get start lands in playing, the deck. You might just have to start playing Besaju as a land because I think the strength of it is you have to look at it as a land and like yeah, a piece, right? but yeah. I'm yeah, just thinking I, more like if I see Besaju in an opener, it, I'm not mm -hmm. going to play it as a green source most of the time. I'm going to ship that opener, so I'm I'm seeing a six card right. hand instead of seven. That's fair. Yeah, no, I agree with the with the thing, but um. I've been brainwashed by Mikey and those people to play 27 to 25 lands um, because Rox's spell works. And listen, um, they have not been wrong yet, but you do multi oblivion. Yeah, I think you need to make those considerations more often in Sans Red. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There, we do have this. We do have this thing. Uh, called Dockside Extortionist, where if you're on, like, oof and not red, you can't you can't afford it. That. But yeah. uh, rocks and Dockside Extortionist do tend to heal all wounds. Uh, uh, yeah, rocks are pretty good. Unless you're uh, Bonnie Burton, in which case uh, 19 lands now or something on IROG Turbo Citadel. So different. I have no idea how that works. Yeah, I don't know how it works, but it Who does. It has them? against me. What? Nineteen. What? Well, yeah, it, like no. nineteen lands in Irod Turbo Citadel Snoop. Wow, I yeah. thought about going to like twenty-two on Marwin, but that's bold, Captain. I started playing um, Blue Farm a couple of weeks ago, and the list that I were looking that I was looking at we we're on we're on twenty-six, and I was like, I gotta cut things and add two lands. <laughs> add lands, <laughs> yep. Yeah, like, uh, th that that's for the bold. I I don't know if I'm gonna say it's correct, but um, yeah. Um, well, cool. That was a good discussion. That was a good discussion. I'm glad so, that we were able to have that. Um, there was a little spoiler. Um, mm -hmm. that I that I just been hearing a lot of hype about it. Um, might be slaughtering the name Tazrin the Infinite. Oh, okay. The six mana model black creature. Um, it's the necrotic um, ooze, right? Necrotic ooze for artifacts. Yeah, six Ooh, mana. Yeah. Necrotic so, ooze yeah. for artifacts. Yeah. So this this guy has pretty much a I win button with buried alive. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so okay. Oh, so cause believe- uh, metal worker walking ballista. I'm Pilipala. Nice. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, so it's like an eye wind button. So I'm like, oh, that that seems broken. That we are now just making wing cons with one card wing cons. So, yeah. I'd love to see another mono blacklist that is fast. This is, I think this is super, super ridiculously fast, but it gets blown up by, you know, the the whole statement of if you remove his command, he can't do anything. So, yeah, I right. mean, so I've seen mono black move into like I, people have tried Yogmoth. Crick is the only thing I've seen with any like repeated success. Correct. Uh, I I tried Nashi. Nashi is fun, but very easy to stop. Uh I'm trying to think of other mono black decks that have like I remember old Sadisi, uh, the uh, the ad nauseum deck that he just cast Sadisi to get nauseous. And- yeah, Sadisi yeah. fishbowl. Yeah, yeah, that was a fun one too. Um, what we have? We have a. Oh, what do you think about that, Greg? Any any remarks? On Sadisi mono black Sadisi storm. No, on on the new spoiled card. Uh, it just reminded me of my friend's um, Lazav the Multifarious list. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just plays like um, it's the buried alive combo, but he tries to do a Marwin opposition agent lock. Okay. And so I was just thinking about like he also runs Necrotic Ooze lines in that deck, and this is just another redundant piece for that combo. And actually, I'm about to send the spoiler over to him so he can look at it. <laughs> oh. So we have a question from a tarmac mm-hmm. asking, why do you guys play CDH? And Greg, why do you play CDH? Because um, I like Commander, but I want to play Commander at its most, at its, its, its most powerful extent, I guess. Um, like I, I, back when I played casual Commander, I played like a Moldrotha value pile and I would just sit there and draw cards and, you know, remove everyone else's stuff and sit there and draw cards until eventually I decided it was time to win the game. And I can just take that same game plan and translate it to competitive and like deal with like, I had the, the best competitive games are the ones that go on for like uh, three turns, but they're two and a half hour long games because everyone has explosive starts and the game is are just super interactive and there's just so much going on. And you sit back and you realize like, holy shit, if that was a casual game, like the first eight turns would have been boring as hell, right? Yeah. yeah. There's always so much action going on in competitive and you never have a dull game because it's like someone either wins on turn two or the game goes on super long and it's super interactive. There are a few times where it's like I'm playing up against three Winota decks and it's like, all right, great. This game's just horrible, but... <laughs> yeah it's a it's a fun time i i just like playing the best stuff that i can uh yeah. for my specific archetype i'm not playing nas because i just don't enjoy nas for me it's because the uh commanders look so good uh yeah it's oh, the we commander. can talk about good looking commanders one sec because the commanders look so good the, the edge foils okay yeah. um that's pretty that's- much it I, I don't have any pretty commanders to My show. My friends play there. it, so I I have the Etch Foil. I have a bunch of Thrasios and Vile Smashers, the Etch Foils, but then recently I got these Rocky Altars. Uh, Heck yeah, see? For uh Thrasios and Vile. My my deck is basically fully foiled. I'm only missing a couple cards at this point. I love that. Um That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. But yeah, C E D H is fun and, and it's what my friends play and um the cards are pretty, and you, you can know. do powerful stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I like doing the most busted thing in whatever format I'm playing, and uh, it's not fair to do the most busted thing against a table of people who just want to play EDH. So, CEDH is that outlet to like know that it's okay to do the busted thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It just my my friends started playing it. Friends, and that's where we started, and just kept. They started out degenerate, so we just went from from regular casual degenerate and kept going up. So yeah, I remember that was the it. um, every the, the the three players on Omnath Locus of Rage, playing all the effects and yeah, everybody uh, in the 
all the all the bells and whistles and I'm not so. I take a break for a few months and everybody's playing Godo when I get back. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess we'll go fast now. Yep. We'll just count to 11. Uh, but no, that that is that is our reasons to play CDH, yeah. I believe. Um, have you gentlemen watched the new Kahlua video? I Did have not. No. It is Kahlua in there. You I need to do that. Come either. on. Come on, guys. We need to get on there. I believe there was an interview with Shauna from the what is it, Command Zone. Am I saying and? that correctly? Oh, is it? Oh, yes. And Amazon. Oh, my bad. My Come bad. on, Sean. And our also caster for Eminence. Yeah, I also the new caster for Eminence. Welcome to the team, Shauna. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> so rude of me. Wow. But yes. Um, no, it was it was cool. Uh, I think they did a quick little deck tech on Niv Mizzet. Nice. And that was cool. Um, enjoyed Niv Mizzet. Played that for a a good little while there and people hated me when I played so did not go back to it it was some very strong hatred so yeah. haven't went back to it since then but love the deck great fan of it yeah. um, I will always speak highly of Niv Mizzet that card is just amazing uh, yeah. yeah for deck. I think for a solid I think Scott suffered through that for like a solid year I try to force them visit in every deck I played. You and Deke and Tim and Richie. Um, yeah, we've literally just forced it in every deck. It does. It doesn't play blue red. Yes, okay. Yeah. They've missed it, isn't it? That that was like the 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 level of it, and it's you know, in a lot of decks. I think that uh, you and Greg might might get along in that aspect because Greg was a pretty big Niv Mizza ass advocate for a long time, we'll and only that recently that. did people kind of accept that wisdom, accept that knowledge. But oh uh, yeah, it was not accepted for a while. I believe when dude, it yeah. was horrible for the longest time. Like I would try to tell people that Niv Mizza was playable in CDH, and they looked at me and was like. Six mana, six colored pips doesn't win you the game. What the hell are you smoking? And it's like, all right, whatever. Um, and then like the feeling of you know getting the Niv Mizzet down, and then everyone's looking at it like, holy shit, how do we deal with this? Because yeah, you know, no one runs interaction for creatures. Um, yeah. yeah, it was it was I've a great time. <laughs> I've seen like Thrasios Crom, Neoforming Crom, and the Niv Mizzet. Oh. oh yeah, that's so a fun, that's a fun gimmick. We we did we did it all. <laughs> really. That's a fun gimmick for sure. <laughs> for whoever was playing with us at that time, it was pretty pretty frustrating. And then we <laughs> finally got we finally got Thrasios Val to stick, and I gave up on it. And I think I jumped on Hermit Droid, and I think Greg took it over since then, which I'm happy for because man, I we I played it until there was no more playing it. Yeah. But oh, it was great, great deck, great deck. Um, the last thing I think we have on the docket is um, this Winota versus Winota versus Winota versus Winota CEDH match that the crazy people that you're a part of playing with power did. Um, yes, um, for all for all the Winota fanatics out there, if you want to versus yeah, Louis Stardust all- versus Rachel Weeks and versus Mike from playing with power, aka right. uh. Punt Post City Malone's tournament new best friend, Punt City oh. Oh tournament God. winner, yeah. Post Malone's new best friend, Mike from Playing With Power. Yep, yep, he is. He's living the high on the Post Malone, but that's cool though. They got some cool VIP passes for a concert, so that's that's definitely cool. Um, Mike is living the best life with near forming crop into consecrated things. See. I would I I'm not a believer on the C Finks um train there. Mike I crush you at one Twitch stream on um, playing power where I knew where I I just like it was like turn three hard cast consinks. Me? Yeah, I think so. Uh, oh you you crank on me. No no I there was a there was a Twitch stream I think where I um I had a, a really early consecrated Sphinx and Curious Control. Yeah, I, have no I, I idea. remember, but I, I will speak for consecrated Sphinx. That card is really good. <laughs> I I have gotten consecrated Sphinx so many times back when um, 
the lab men were active and we played a lot with Luke and me, Luke, Scott and those lab men. And it was everyone has borrowed each other's consecrated things. And I, was, cool. and I was tired of it. You resolve it and everyone just waited with their gilded drinks to take it. And I stopped playing Sea of Things for that very reason. That was why I stopped playing Jenga Taxis. Yeah. It was you literally bad in a row. Uh, I, I went to Nezza Hall. I was I'm a Nezza Hall believer because it protects itself. Yeah, um, Nezza Hall is really good. Yeah. Nezza Hall is a really cool card. And it's budget friendly. Um and it's, yes. I remember I was playing Elishnorn and Razakats back then and Luke was playing Elishnorn and Razakats and Luke cut Elishnorn from Razakats because he just took mine. Yep. And then that was like the extent of, of how inbred those games were where everyone was just gilded draking for everyone else's reanimation targets and uh it was a great time a really good time for sure um it was not fun actually it was terrible terrible experience it was a bundle of laughs i don't know i guess i'm just i'm just gravitated to inbred metas because now i'm just I am that one hipster that refused to play Rock Silas. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in 3X Rock Silas puzzles. I'm like, no, no, I will not. I will not join the dark side. I will not. I will not stroke your ego. But now you're playing uh, Orbald. Um, yeah, because you know what they do, Scott? They all play artifacts. And you know what Dark Side is? Dark Side is a good card. So yeah, I just get to win games with that but um yeah i believe that is that'll be the rundown for the week yep it's time to move into the point where i would normally take a break to go get our guest but instead of doing that i will not take a break to go get our guest because he is here greg tell everyone a little bit about yourself who you are when you started playing cedh uh and where people can find you on the internet all right well hi guys uh my name is greg um I'm a college student somewhere in the Midwest. Um, I uh, I started playing Magic. Well, I learned how to play Magic in 2013 uh, at some summer camp. And then I started buying into it around, what was it, late 2015, 2016. I think the first like booster box I bought was Shadows Over Innistrad or Shadows Under Innistrad. Okay. I don't know. Um, I played a lot of, uh, I played Modern Blue Moon for a while um because that was just the deck that i enjoyed playing i got to do lightning bolts and all sorts of mm-hmm. fun stuff um and then i started playing commander in like 2017 and then swapped to cdh in 2019 um and that's kind of where i've where i've been at um when i started playing cdh i actually started with um i played like maximum power Muldrotha. Yeah. Which only worked for a little bit, and then I swapped to City Seabrew Tyrant, and I played Flash Hulk and the um, the Hermit Druid things, and mm-hmm. all, all sorts of layered combo. Um, and then continued on the Sultai hype train to uh, Kazaru Kima, and then from Kazaru Kima, basically went straight to Thrasios Fast Masher. Uh, nice. And I've been playing that ever since. Oh, we did not even go through the Tassiger? Uh, I played Tassiger for like two weeks. Um, and I hated getting bullied by my mm-hmm. playgroup. And I was like, this is fucking miserable. Um, I have constant revealed interaction. I yeah. never want to play this deck again. And so I never played the deck again. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh. it's, it's, it's a decent deck, but I just don't have the mental capacity to, to play Jessica anymore because <laughs> I lose red. I lose, I lose stocks. I can't play it. Um, you lose stocks and you cannot play. That's a, that's a good enough reason right there. Um, yeah. All right, well, let's get into some hard-hitting questions. Greg, we're talking about control in CEDH right now. What, what is, would you say, is the role of a control deck in a CEDH game? Um, so most people would say that the role of the control deck is just to be the table police, um, at the pod. You know, it's, it's their responsibility to to answer every threat. It's their responsibility to, you know, keep everyone in check. But what I found is that Control actually just wants to make the game go longer. Um, it does the exact same thing that Stacks wants to do, but instead of 
you know, preventing attempts with with cards on board, it just prevents attempts with, with spells, with or with instants, um, at, while drawing cards the entire time. And so the advantage that it has in comparison to a stacks thing is like it it develops like a Rhystic Study or it develops a Curiosity of File Smasher and then it you just slowly gain value and then, you know, people blink and then it's like, oh my god, why does the control deck have four ways to draw cards on yeah. board? And all of a sudden, like, you just win games. Um, but, yeah, control is not... It doesn't try to win early. I mean, every deck that is in at least Curious Control, um, those colors, of course, you can go for the turn one or the turn two wins. You'll get the nuts sometimes. You'll get the Thoracle Consult plus a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But... Most of the time, you're just trying to sit there and draw out stuff. Or buying turns, as a lot of says. Buying turns, as a lot of the chat says, yeah. So you just want to push the game until the point where your overwhelming advantage is Mm -hmm. enough for you to have things to win the game. Yeah, basically. So the control is... I mean, you could call it, like, tempo, essentially. It is... uh, the thing that uh, the thing that I've always said about control in CEDH is like stacks is control and decks that call themselves control tend to just be mid range decks. Um, it's hard to it's hard to call something control in CEDH to uh, to the point of the like it's not analogous to to control in one v one. Oh my my thoughts on that. Um, I actually just spoke to uh, Mike from Playing With Power about it um, like an hour before the stream. Um, Stacks, uh, only the non-Winota stacks of the world would be considered reactive because they're actively mulliganing for the cards they need to answer the current threats at the table or to answer the current like pod composition, right? So if you're sitting down with your stack stack and you know you're going up against a Grixis Breach and like a Razakets, right? Like, you're probably looking for, like, a rest in peace, right? You're probably looking for a stacks effect that hits multiple opponents that's going to force the game to slow down. Um, compared to, like, Winota, which I think is the premier... Well, we can all agree that Winota is the premier stacks deck right now. I think so, yeah. Winota Ooh. doesn't mulligan for stacks pieces. It mulligans for Winota, Winota and, and an attack triggers. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It, it's... Do- it mulls like a Nazis list, which is just interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really call it um, with other stacks. It's like that's true. It's aggro, like aggro, aggro deck. combo ball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Winota is a kind of the the tip of what we would what we would classify as stacks decks, but I think it is its own thing. <laughs> it is its own thing. Having yeah, I would... like a bunch of rule of law stacks. Winota is just at it. I don't know. It's very different from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what? So your so your role is to slow down the game. So so every hand that you would look at um, is pod dependent, correct? Every hand that um, well, so my cards aren't suited for individual threats, like. Um, I will always say that Control is one of those decks that gets better the longer you play it in your metagame. Okay. Um, the the primer list, what I have right now, is just a guide to get people started. Um, I don't think you should play that for 100 games in your meta, because you need to tune the deck to your metagame. Okay. Um, and so, like, I don't run Grafdigger's Cage. I probably should, Right. And if I if I know that my meta plays a lot of Winota, I would definitely start playing more Graft Digger's Cage. And in that case, I'm mulliganing for Graft Digger's Cage. But the current answers in my list are all fairly universal. And so there's no need to mulligan. There's no need to reactively mulligan for specific things. You actually mulligan for card draw. And I'm actually a bit of a psychopath and I prefer to keep like sevens or sixes, basically, no matter what. If it has lands and spells and can at least set one draw engine up, like that's basically all I need. Because with with partners, you have a seven to nine card opening hand and then your draw for turn. If you look at it like that in a slower deck, I have 10 cards in my opening hand. And okay. all, all of the Nas lists and all of the lists that are just like, I got to go fast or whatever, and they're mulliganing to four or mulliganing, you know, for for the nuts. 
Um, if they get stopped by a single piece of interaction, now they're at three cards and I'm at eight cards um, or nine cards. And it just puts me in a much better spot for the long run. Okay. Uh, that is true. That is very true. Um... And you gotta take every advantage that you get because one for one trades in uh, Commander are horrible and you never want to be making them. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, because it's a multiplayer game, and I don't think you end up at the at the best end of that for one for one. But you still have to eventually do it because if you're reacting on the stack, you're technically one for one. In unless you're playing like some cards like Fluster and Man Break Trap, Arcane but you're or definitely or you're or playing what? stuff like Arcane so. Now. No, yeah, no, no, no. Oh. If you're playing stuff like Curiosity on File Smasher, this is the part yeah. of the engine that people, like, really under. Sure, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah because you, you buy back every spell that you cast interacting, and then on your own turn, you draw for turn, you draw when you start to develop, and then you draw when you go to combat, right? So it's basically Timna, but you're also replacing your spells that you use on other people's turns. Like, I, it's a really powerful engine. Um, mm. And oh. once you once you have that engine enabled, that's when you could just start aggressively making one for one trades because you're going to be maintaining right. card advantage. Maybe to, that's fair. So I'm going to be the opposite side of this conversation. I'm going to say to you that Greg, I am in a pod where we're playing turn two, turn three is too slow. Should I play control into my meta? So I actually played control into that kind of meta for a while. Um, I play with uh, Connor and a group of friends. um, And for the longest time, they were all on either Blue Farm or Grixis um, Malcolm. And the games that I would win on that server, it was I would win less games on that server. Right. But I, I still won a fair amount of games. And it was off of Mulligans for mostly just one CMC interaction or Mulligans for Mystic Remora's or Rhystic Studies. Like in in those situations, you have to start aggressively Mulliganing for like three or four bases of interaction um, because those decks quickly run out of gas. And, you know, when everyone's in top deck mode, you're going to win those games. All right. Then. So that's so that's where Mulligan decisions matter. So that. That's where mulligan decisions matter is based off pod composition and uh, a meta thing, right? Like the, the the primer version, you know, after like 10 games of these Grixis piles, like I'm going to start, you know, swapping out some of the less efficient things and start slotting in more. Like I'll put spell pierce to put spell snare back in the deck. Um, All right, so you play, wanna... your answer is play to your meta. Good, great, play your, great. Play great. to your meta. So yeah, great Lotto answer. in the chat brings up a question. Um, does offer you can't refuse belong in a control deck if your goal is to go to the long game? It is such an efficient card for what it does. Um, it is one mana counter target non creature spell. There are very few cards that say that. Um, I have yet to be punished by it because I'm a firm believer that if I'm countering your. Um, like your turn two gnaws with an offer you can't refuse and you immediately eat the counter and then use that two mana to cast uh, like an underworld breach like you had it you had it already you already had the win so I didn't give you that win because you already had the shit you had the nuts cards in hand um, and an offer you can't refuse also allows for some political thing right where it's like I can stop someone's you know rhystic study I can stop someone's gnaws and be like point to you hey you have Two and treasures two you can mana. and 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 cards in hand, like interact with this threat on the stack. Um and there there's some political power involved. It's the downside, I, you don't see it often. Um so I've lived the back? floor of offer you can't refuse, and I've lived the ceiling of offer you can't refuse. I play mm-hmm. Razakat, so I play collector oof, so I play offer in there, and it's just funny to give people treasures. Uh, <laughs> that they can't do anything with. But I've also lived the using offer to protect my ad nauseum and giving my opponent two mana, and then they cast the silence that was in their hand that they didn't have mana for. So, I don't have an ad nauseum to protect. So yeah, not really, yeah. Not really relevant for me. So um, it is It is a question of whether you're using it reactively versus proactively, essentially. Uh, Chloe, but we're, 
Clue in the chat right. brought up that it's a ritual. You can counter your own Gitaxian probe or whatever and ramp yourself, but it's kind of a awkward in that sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it does act as both. I mean, I guess if I'm really desperate, I could, like, cast my Mox Diamond and then counter it and get two mana. Um, it's pretty good in Krark. But it's, it's really good in Krark, but, like, in that situation I just described, I could just have a mana and the mox diamond yeah. and that's that's two mana anyways um so it's it's very like I, I i never use it as a ritual it's always used as just a one mana counter target non-creature spell like unless they print something better than offer offer stays in the deck <laughs> cool that's fair so in chat i'm gonna i'm gonna need um wi-fi to calm calm down it says wtf it's not butter that's mitch i think it is bitch. Right? Yeah. You, you need to you need to calm down. So we're having we're having a, a good conversation. Toxic is not needed. But um <laughs> no, so I, I know you were saying that you don't play Nas, but you we're we're talking as a control deck. It doesn't have to be curious control itself. Yeah. But yeah. But I mean I guess if you would be considered a control deck, you wouldn't be playing Nas. Your payoffs there might be like if you're in black Assume it might be a PETA or an either or none. So I could definitely see that. But um I I like the card. I'm not gonna say it's the best. I think it's better than spell pierce. If I'm gonna like yeah, better than spell pierce. Uh, I think it's better than spell pierce. Yes, I give you mana and you play more spells. Sure, it's suck to suck. And I want people to keep playing over for my own bias reasons because I play Corvold. And you can counter my spells to give me two more draws. And I'm okay with that. But that's my own bias reasons. Um, a thing that I kind of <coughs> touched on is, Greg, you said you, you don't play Nas. You like Offer because it fits in the control shell. So I think it's kind of important to, to first kind of establish. We've determined what you do when you play a control deck. But what in deck construction makes a deck a control deck versus a mid-range deck versus a combo deck? specifically um, this actually goes right into the point i was about to make Excellent. um so <laughs> i might get a little bit of flack for this but i don't like big payoff spells like Nas or pita in control at all in basically any deck regardless of colors um because you want all of your draws to be meaningful and drawing a pita when you're looking for interaction off of a, you know, a triggered draw effect or mm -hmm. something, it's just a really bad feeling because PETA is only good once you've hit that late game and you want stuff that's really flexible. Yeah. And react reactive or control decks aren't, unless they're Toxril, um, aren't going to be playing the rituals to support a Nas or support a PETA. And so in those in those slots, I'd actually just run Limdul's Vault. So... As the best card in the deck Connor um, in the chat brings up okay. the point that I've heard multiple people say that ad nauseum is the best counter spell in the format okay how do you how do you how do you feel about limb duels vault versus ad nauseum as uh, a thing to get you what you need quickly uh is this just for generic CDH or for control? This is specifically in the in the in the in the context of a control deck. In the context of a control deck, Limduel's Vault hands down is one of the best cards in the list. Okay. Um, um, I will say that scrying a Pita to the bottom with Thrasios always feels really really bad, uh, and especially when, like you said, you need a piece of interaction and not appear into the abyss. That you can't even cast. Or like yeah. even any instant speed spell to so get your trigger off of a vial smasher or whatever. Um Yeah. So okay. You 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 mentioned Limdul's vault and a lot of I believe a lot of players been cutting Limdul's vault for whatever. They're all wrong. <laughs> They're all wrong. I I agree. I I, I, I don't know if <sighs> That's a tough one. All right, Limb Duel's Vault is a good card. Greg, I agree with preach, that. Preach your sermon here on Limb Duel's Vault. I need to hear it. Okay. 
Uh, you have not lived until you've had a Niv Mizzet in play and a Limb Duels Vault on the stack. All if, right, you're, you're giving right. me a candy light. No, sir. Oh, no, 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 okay. That happens often, but you don't even need the Niv Mizzet, right? Limb Duels Vault is just a instant speed bad doomsday pile. And if you look at it like that, it like... All right, it is, it is really good at all stages of the game. You can Limb Duels Vault on a turn one end step right before you to just go find like your Ristic Star. You can just go find your Remora. You can just do whatever, right? But you also get to stack your next few draws. And so if you get to find off of Limdul's Vault, if you could find Remora, like Swan Song, and like, I don't know, like a Signet and then a Fetch Land or something. I don't know what the last card is. You can stack your stuff to to fully benefit off of that that uh Limdul's Vault. And even if your your Limdul's Vault pile is like the card you're looking for and a bunch of lands. If you have any shuffle effect, you can just take the one card you want off that pile and then just randomize it. Um, it is it is a really adaptive card, and there have been plenty of games where I've limb duels vaulted, and then it's like, oh my god, look at this pile! It's just like calling it Seaborn Muse, right? And it, it's it is really flexible with the amount of tutors in the list and with the amount of tutors in our format. It is uh, a very it's very much like a build your own. Um, Doomsday. It's very strong. Hmm. Uh, um, Doomsday. Isn't Doomsday a build your own Doomsday? <laughs> Doomsday is triple black oh. and it's sorcery fair. speed and it also cuts your life total in half and does a bunch of other shit. Fair, 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 fair. <laughs> uh, I mean, these are words that, that Rick is saying and I, I'm, I'm, I might try and end those for <laughs> You should, you should try. It's better than like your worst card. Like, Vault's really strong. <laughs> it's better than my worst card. So, cut, Scott, cut it for Razakas. Yeah, you cut Corvald and it'll be... <laughs> I don't play Blue. Can't, yeah, can't do yeah, that, yeah. Good, yeah, exactly. Um, So, getting more into what makes a deck a control deck, you're talking about efficient one-for-one -one trades on interaction. You're talking about basically playing efficient... Uh, Tutors, card selection, uh, advantage engines. So in the in the context of Curious Control specifically, we're talking about playing the Curiosity effects with Vile Smasher. We're talking about uh, Limdul's Vault being uh, one of them. You're, uh, I assume, on the full suite of Cantrips. Ponder, um, Preordain. I'm just on Gitaxian Probe and Ponder right now. Okay, um, no Brainstorm? I am. Oh, yes, Brainstorm. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Um. Uh, are you looking to uh establish early mana advantage to make Thrasios live, or is your grind engine generally Vile Smasher? So recently, I've actually been moving away from Thrasios. the The nice thing about Thrasios is, um, you can just Thrasios is good with just lands. You don't need anything else to make Thrasios a viable piece, and mm -hmm. also being able to the the pattern of like turn one dork into turn two Thrasios hold up a mana uh, is really scary for people because it presents three You're potentially three three free spells. Yeah. Um, and you know you have you still have one mana available. So most yeah. play patterns are Thrasios on two or Thrasios on one if we can. Um, it's also like a blocker for Timna and whatever. But yeah, as the the game goes longer. Um, Thrasios requires more cards to make it scary, and everyone knows how scary Thrasios can get. Yeah. Like, a Thrasios plus a Draining Grounds plus a Seaborn Muse plus, you know, like a Mana Vault or something is just horrifying, and no mm -hmm. one's going to let that engine stick around. Um, but right now, it's really only, like, my my close playgroup that is constantly denying me from having Vile Smasher uh, with Curiosity in play. Okay. Um most random games that I get into, I just I set the engine up on turn three and then no one interacts with it. And it's like I am I'm literally drawing more cards. Like I I'm untapping with eight cards in hand. I, I don't know what's going wrong here, but um, so you mentioned getting your engine online on turn three and just kind of grinding from there. How are you uh, how are you making it so establishing an engine on turn three is enough? Like, what do you do in the first two turns other than so you said establish Thrasios, right? Yeah, so it's so turn turn one, turn two, turn three. 
I mean, again, establishing your engine, establishing your engine depends on what you have in your yeah. opening hand. If you have the early, the early fierce, the early like deflecting SWAT or relic, you want to establish a Thrasios. But if you have a curiosity effect or a tandem lookout, you want to get that plan going. And so it's really like kind of swingy left or right, really. Like, do you want um, to be on the activate or do you want to be on the aggressively interact plan? Um, I, I. I really respect the place you're playing because I wish for those games. Mm -hmm. I wish for the games where I have time to play a Thrasios and leave mana open. I don't even have time to play a Tender, Greg. I, I don't know where you need to play. You need to invite me there, God. Because I, I don't have time to resolve Commander's concern. It's, uh... What meta are you playing into? Because, like, uh, I... I don't have issues with uh, with these games. Yes. I, Turbo I, Nas, buddy. Yes, I mean, but it's, it's all like see this is just all about a big community and I jump from a lot of different communities. Yeah. But yeah, but I've like let's let's go from like an open tournament play. You were at Pun City. Um how how did you perform? I, I assume you brought Curious Control. So I I went oh for uh one drop at Pun City. Okay. Um yeah. But I, I completely blame one of those games on uh, a guy who refused to interact and said that he, he, he passed priority or he passed the turn into a Yisan with win on board because he wanted to, and his own words, he wanted to see Yisan win or he wanted to see how Yisan <laughs> wins. And it's like, great, you just, you threw the game. You have revealed like ways to find, he had Tainted Pact looking for a deadly relic to hit the, a Shia or something, or I don't remember the exact line. That was a while ago. He passed um, it for experiment. Is that what you're telling me? He he passed priority because he wanted to see how Yisan won the game. After oh. like I had spent you know the last like hour just like you know getting to this point where it's like I I'm confident like I in my abilities to win the game. He he that game was a fucking mess. But um. All right, that that game. Anyways, that Punt City, it was great. Um, I I made a couple of misplays. It was my first, uh, competitive tournament. I usually have not been available for those, and so it was kind of nerve wracking to play with. You know, there's there are hundreds of people there. There was a lot of yeah. a lot of folks, a lot of noise, a lot of shit going on. Um, I'm just I haven't been comfortable in those environments before. But okay. Curious Control always felt like it was, it was almost there like i was doing all of my game actions basically as efficiently as i could mm -hmm. and it just resulted in a game loss or i just you know i didn't have the fifth piece of interaction to stop the third one attempt in a row yeah so, um, uh, so maybe again, like maybe that was not a great example i apologize <laughs> no, no, it's it's a deck it's a deck more suited for for metas that you build up right everyone has known played meta, your, yeah yeah if I were to go back to Punt City, I, I'd probably still bring Curious Control because I whatever. It's a fun deck. Um, but it, I would recommend not playing it into a tournament map. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very hard. <laughs> oh, we have a, um, a question here from Quasar. I'm also slaughtering, slaughtering that. I apologize. It's all right. But, as a stack player, I'm having a hard time figuring out the trade-off between how much terrible interaction to run versus grand game interaction. Um, I know you're not the stacks players, but you're the closest to it, Greg. So yeah. what 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 would you have? What I see you have here. So yes. the trade-off between running tur like interaction for turbo and interaction against grindy decks is is that the question? Because yeah, I, th I think the, they're trying to establish a balance between essentially their their interaction for turbo decks versus their interaction for mid range. So I don't I don't know what colors you're playing, but I guess the best answer is you want to run cards that are flexible. Um, in the sense that I think Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast are the perfect examples of this. They are counter spells on the stack, and they are also just removal spells for the grindiest engines, right? Well, I'm and, fairly certain I recognize this name from the Thrasios Timna channels on the CEDHU server, so I'm pretty sure it's Thrasios Timna. Oh, okay, so probably off the blasts. Probably not um, the blasts, but... Uh, Drown in the Lock is a pretty decent option. Blue-black, plus if you've got... You know, if they've got a couple cards in their yard, it's usually 
a counter spell, or it's usually like a pretty efficiently costed counter spell or mm -hmm. removal spell. Um, Drown in the Lock is a good option, but I. It's forever. Okay. I I play at a seventy thirty ratio of counter spells to, like, um, specifically destroy target permanent style mm -hmm. effects, which are you know much better suited against the grindier yeah. games. Um, but if you think about it, like counter spells are also good against the grindier games, and even like the counter spells yeah. like misstep are good in the grindier games. You just have to evaluate your cards slightly differently, and you have to realize that. Um, like counter spells are good at all times of the game, and removal spells are good at all times of the game. Um, I guess like spell pierce is like bad on like turn nine, um, and so you just yeah. want to be casting that whenever you get the chance. But... Yeah, I I think that there is um, there's like a fine line that you have to kind of tread, and it's especially I think it's again it's a it's like a it's meta dependent answer, which is the answer that i've always given people when asked about like their interaction suite is like what decks do you play against and and i can't you know like we can we can figure that out from there and then if if someone's like oh i play against three tim necrom or whatever i'm gonna suggest running dispel over something else like i just suggest running dispel in general dispel is just a good card so very efficient speaking of dispel oh my gosh uh, I have a question for you, and it's um, when you're picking stack interaction for your control deck, do you tend to go towards broad answers like counterspell or delay over, or do you tend to go for uh, narrow, more car more cost efficient answers like dispel, spell, snare, miscast, things of that nature? So, it, it's it's kind of weird, um. I you have to run the efficient pieces of interaction. Um, so, you know, I'm on I'm an offer. You can't refuse. I'm on dispel. I'm on mental misstep. I'm on miscast. I'm on all of those like one CMC. Get this thing. Stop this one attempt or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on the blast as well. They're fairly narrow as is. Um, and I'm on packed negation, which is a weird one in control. But it's like. I, I have to run the fast interaction suite to prevent win attempts. Mm -hmm. um, that is just... I mean, it, someone, some game is going to go for the win on turn two, right? And, you know, if you can dispel their consultation on turn two, dispel is... You know, it's going to counter a consult on turn two, it's going to counter a consult on turn nine. Um, it is... Again, you just got to recognize how effective spells are. And I run 18 counter spells too. Um, actually, I think I'm up to... 20 on my paper list but uh yeah i run all sorts of narrow and very broad pieces of interaction i'm actually recently i've been on mana leak and mana drain okay um, as, as well as drown in the lock as my my two cmc pieces I'm of less 20 card. interaction 20 no, 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 33 pieces of interaction 20, 20 of them are counter spells uh, i don't know if i'm even on eight Jeez. Yeah, see, we are built different, my friend. We are, yes. <laughs> I'm on seven in most decks that I play. A Terramax oh says, God. are you playing Mindbreak Trap? Oh, okay, of course. Mindbreak Trap is the best counterspell. Or not the, not the best, but um, I remember back when... Uh, God, Gustav and I were in a voice chat at one point talking about Mindbreak Trap, and I don't remember... Who there were a bunch of people just shitting on it. Like, God, no one's going to play a four CMC counter spell. And I, I was like, this is actually pretty sweet. So I, I ordered a couple foils um, for like, I think it was like $90 or $110 foils. And oh my God, I made big on those. But Oh yeah, they spike yeah. recently. Yep. Yeah, they are. No, but Mindbreak Trap is a very powerful card. Um, we have uh, a couple. Because... Sorry, oh, go yeah, ahead. Couple... I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, Mindbreak Trap is one of those cards where if it's in your opening hand, you don't have to worry about just greeting out and, you know, casting all your different Thrasioses and uh, Mana Rocks or whatever. You can just tap out all you want because you have Mindbreak Trap. It is like no one sees it coming. Um, yeah, I've, I've definitely enjoyed. I was um, previously not on the Mindbreak Trap train, but I've definitely enjoyed uh, moving to Mindbreak Trap and just blowing people out real bad. Mm -hmm. uh with my I'm, 
I am a magnet for my break traps. Yeah. You are. Uh, Dante says hi. I think you saw that. The question is, is to that this whiskey? One. Uh, it's Scotch. What are you? What are you drinking? Uh, it is uh, Johnny Walker Black Label. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's a good sip. Um, mm-hmm. and then oh, we uh, have a uh, lot of MTG bringing up a salient point. Swan song can be cut because it gives your opponents a bird, and birds are not real. No, that's very true. Swan song is really good. Yeah, that's it's very it's, true. it's very good. Yeah. But so have really you? Good. So I have a question. Have you played six chord formats? Yeah, so I played uh, Modern right. Blue Moon. Yeah, yeah Blue Moon. Mm. Well, okay, I, I, I'm not surprised, but okay. So, so yeah, it was the it was like the turn one. Uh, it was a really weird deck. I didn't play it at tournaments. I only played it with like the. I grew up in a small town. There were like maybe ten of us that played Magic, and only like okay. four of us actually tried to play Modern. Um, and so we didn't play like maximum power level. Right. Uh, the deck just tried to slam like a, a turn three blood moon and then eventually uh, a Jaya or one of those planeswalkers then just slowly went from there. So follow up question to that. Who hurt you? Who hurt me? Oh, I think I did. Um, I. Oh, God, uh, I actually like played. Counter spells and control when I was doing kitchen table stuff, mm-hmm. um, kitchen table, when I was like first getting into magic and going through my dad's old cards, we would play, my brothers and I would play on the floor of the basement with unsleeved, like unlimited cards. Yeah. Um, and we would just, you know, shuffle them up and play whatever. Cause that's what he had. Um, nice. And, uh, I played, I played fairly reactive decks and I always like to just get people, uh, when they yeah. tried doing stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I brought that upon myself. I've I've cursed myself. So how do you find this transition? I know like you didn't really play competitively, but how do you find the transition from one v one format to CDH as a control player? Oh my god, control in CDH is so difficult, and that's why I enjoy it. Um, because in in one v one, right, all you have to do is make land drops and you know cast a counter spell. And then every once in a while, you make a two for one trade and you just you win the game. Uh, They need to have the nuts to get out of it. Uh, It doesn't work like that in a multiplayer environment or a four player environment. If I'm making one for one trades to shut down one person, the other two people are like, yeah, cool. Cast my Nas and win the game. (laughs) It's like. It's really bad. It's horrible. Um, One for one trades are not great. It's the only way we can make it work is off the back of curiosity effects or other forms of card advantage and the one way to attack control is just to deal with those forms of advantage mm-hmm. um you have to burn your interaction burn your counter spells on um whatever i play even like a wave break hippocamp i actually i ran wave break hippocamp in my deck because it was a card draw engine that i was positive my playgroup wouldn't remove <laughs> Not lightning because bolt? it was yeah <laughs> It was horrible. And then I played a game with some friends in Ohio and got my turn to Hippocamp Force of Wilt. And I was like, what have I fucking done? <laughs> I heard about I heard about these games, I think. The I was, games with the playing with Power Boys. I was so upset that I got my Hippocamp Force of Wilt because it was like the I, only reason I was on that card is because it was shit. <laughs> so. I think I saw the claim that um the playing with Power Boys are on to your crap and <laughs> they're they're not going to let you win. I think it's yeah. the, the thing that I saw. Um, but, uh, yeah, so resolving card advantages is paramount in your control matchups, so you're never actually 1v1-ing. Or, or, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're never, never taking the one-for-one one trade. One if, one. You, yeah. if you have any form of card advantage, you're breaking even at a bare minimum. All you're doing is you're spending your mana to interact. Um, and if you can get to the point where it's like, I cast a spell and then I have like a hippocamp and a Rashmi trigger, or it's like, you know, you get multiple things happening. That's when it just goes way out of control. Yeah. Um, so how, how greedy, I'm sorry. So um, how greedy should a control player be? Like yeah, we were about to ask do, the same question. Okay. So like, do you, do you only interact with a game winning spell or do you interact with issues? Like if you would tell someone who shares your joy, 
all mm-hmm. hating yourself. Like, you know, no no joy. But um, that was a little harsh. I apologize. But if you share that joy um, with someone else, like, what do you interact with? So, it really... I hate to just say it's meta dependent or it's pod dependent, but it it genuinely is, right? If there's not a single deck at the the table that can present like a turn two Nas or you know can present a turn two Nas, but you have two other blue decks that could potentially interact with that Nas, um, I will one hundred percent counter a Ristic Study or another form of card advantage early on in the game. Mm-hmm. But if the responsibility is on like if there's no other mid range decks or at least slower decks, and it's just these like turbo piles, I can't trust them to interact uh, at any point in the game. <laughs> yeah, okay. like, I, I, I've seen these Nas players who were like who will priority bully me to the extent where it's like I actually have nothing left, but they're still convinced that I have stuff left, and they'll just keep on priority bullying me and then just yeah. lose to someone else's Nas and then flip and reveal a piece of interaction. And it's like <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> but. Um, so it's like, it's, it's difficult, right? But, uh, if, if you feel like you're ahead in a game off of just cards in hand or mana or whatever, you should start countering those other engines because you want to be the person who pulls ahead in the long game. You don't want to be pulling ahead at the same rate as someone else. Um, that's just not, not the ideal situation. We can still win from that position. Um, off the back of like an uncounterable Niv Mizzet is a really good spot to be in, but um, strong yeah. believer in Niv Mizzet. Must must agree. Must strong agree. Strong believer in Niv Mizzet is a really good card. Um, um, I think I think the card would be absolutely unplayable if it didn't have the line of text that said this card. This spell cannot. I'm be common. I totally yeah. agree. It, it yeah, would be a totally horrible agree. spell. That is pretty strong. Um, I'm curious, how do you feel about uh? advantage engines like Archmage Emeritus and uh like Ooh. Storm Kiln Artist that give you I, mana or cards over time. I love Archmage Emeritus. I, uh-huh. I think that, that card is really good. Um the last time I tried getting away with it, it had just recently come out and Korkashima was being picked up as like, oh wait, this is like really powerful with with these effects. Mm-hmm. Um and my my meta wouldn't let me do anything with it. They would kill it on site before he even got to cast any spells. So, um... Oh, how, how, how will the two-month subscription? Yeah, a little housekeeping. Uh, Ooh. thank you for the gift sub M, uh, M Bonnie to, uh, Mikey. And Hal, thank you for the two months. Um, and this is a good time to remind everyone that your, your Prime, your Prime membership gives you one free sub every month on Twitch. And you could use it here, and we would not be upset with you and we'd probably high five you at any time should definitely um, should definitely use it here definitely uh oh, yeah continue continue greg what's what, what you were saying i actually we were talking have a, about artists. go ahead sorry yep i have a new question for you okay. mm-hmm. um and it's you you've told us that you play 33 interactive spells and 20 of them are counter spells and 13 of mm-hmm. them are either like card selection or removal well there's actually i i wasn't counting the sorceries in that mix there are still more pieces of card selection or removal in there okay um but yeah like a a decent amount of how did you come to that balance um i actually had uh i don't know if he's in the chat tonight uh but i got a friend um disco breaker or zach who has kind of been there telling me to not go overboard with the, with like developing curious control because in the the transition of starting to to play that deck I was on Thrasios file Nas and it was like this is nice but I actually don't enjoy casting Nas I'd rather just counter your spells and draw cards mm-hmm. um and so it was the transition of like cutting rituals and adding more counter spells cutting um you know, cutting like infinite mana combos and adding more uh, compact combos or because you more, can win layered combos with our advantages. Because yeah. um, you can win we the don't... best combo in the game, Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't need to run three different infinite mana combos when I just have the Oracle on the deck. It'll be fine. I'll get there eventually. Um, 
But it was like it was a slow transition. I think the last threshold I hit, well, I, I got yelled at when I went to 14 counter spells. I got yelled at when I went to 17 counter spells. And like now that I'm up to 33 pieces of interaction, I think most of the people that I talk to on a daily basis are like, yeah, that's just a normal thing for Greg to be doing right now. Um, but I would not play that many pieces of interaction. It's just like if, if Curious Control is your first deck, I would not run 20 counter spells. It okay. Is, uh, it is definitely a different play pattern than what most people would expect. Um, um, actually, I see a, a question in chat about has Rashmi fallen out of yeah. favor? Um, no. Rashmi is really fun. It is a very powerful card. Um, you have to play it in spaces where people won't remove it instantly. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, you haven't lived until you've had a Rashmi and then like a dig through time and then you respond to the Rashmi trigger with a worldly tutor for Niv is it? Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> like it, it sounds like a dream, but it happens fairly frequently. <laughs> mm. I have um, a you cheat some big stuff. Out. I have a single card uh, question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Flame sweep is in your list. Are you? Yes. Are you going to be considering Delayed Blast Fireball in its stead? Or are you a I big Flame Sweep am. fan? I am actually considering Delayed Blast Fireball. Um, I'm trying to think about what I told to Callahan the other day who was talking to me about this. Uh, they're awesome. Yeah. Um, it was okay. So Flame Sweep is currently in the list because it is a, a singular red pip. Um, Delayed Blast Fireball being double red pips really makes things difficult when we want to do what Flame Sweep does. Okay. Um, Flame Sweep is... <laughs> bold statement, Flame Sweep is time walk in, uh, in Curious Control. When, when I'm playing into a slower pod, not the Grixis Piles... Right, yeah. not the Grixis piles I'm playing. Even actually, some of the Grixis piles. If they do a turn one Malcolm, it's still pretty good. Um, but if I can end step a flame sweep and destroy creatures on two or three people's boards, mm -hmm. it is really quite efficient. It's also just an instant that interacts with Najila and also every other player. And then every other player can't look at me and be like, "Oh, I have to counter that flame sweep because it stops what I'm doing." Because <laughs> the flame sweep is what's currently stopping the Najila from winning the game. Um, so but I think it, I think yeah, that, that it's a very flexible piece. But the only reason why it's still in the list is because it's a singular red pip, so yeah. it can be cast off of just you know just like a land and a soul ring or a land or a crypt. So, so that kind of brings up another thing. Uh, mm -hmm. as for in playing curious control, in playing control in general, uh, there are times when the plays that you make negatively impact everyone at the table except for you, but. Uh, they impact one person significantly more that might be trying to present a win in the next turn cycle. Uh, so how do you navigate those difficult... Because um, frankly, it's it's a, you're a salesman at that point. Like, oh, you have to let this go through. Look at how many Najilas this bad boy can fit. Like, no, oh. it's, it's, it's literally... It's as easy as you look at them. Effectively dead in the eye, right? Because we don't have cameras most of the time when you're playing magic online but it's like you look at him and it's like do you have two pieces of interaction for the flame sweep and for the najila that has yeah. been on board right and if you don't you let the flame sweep resolve if you do like congratulations you spend both your pieces of interaction because this is my aunt i can this is where it's like lying in cdh i know it's frowned upon but even if i have more pieces of interaction in hand that could stop a najila oh. win like if i have a deadly relic in hand that could be stopping najila or I have a flame sweep to cast. I'm casting the flame sweep because it interacts with the other two players, and there is no reason to counter it if they mm -hmm. can't double interact flame sweep and the Najila win. And omission um, is not a lie in this case, right? Like if you say flame sure. sweep is your answer for Najila, mm -hmm. you've not you've not lied. Yeah. You've just said like, yeah, that's the answer that I'm willing yeah. to put to that I'm willing but to commit to the board. The I'm not willing to commit to the board because that's suspicious as fuck, but uh, it's just Flame Sweep is the answer for Najila here. And if you can't answer both Flame Sweep and the Najila win, you shouldn't counter the Flame Sweep. Yeah. 
And that's basically my go to. Um, and it works. It works most of the time because people look at it and it's like, well, damn, I don't want to burn two pieces of interaction just to keep like whatever I have on board. Nice. Right. And it's it works. It works often. Quasar in the chat. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Zane, try volcanic fallout. No, sorry. All Next right. Question. It's just a straight no. Uh, Shani, what were you oh. going to say? Um, I was like, I, I see Greg does a play with a lot of um, myself um, and Scott because that those those kind of politics don't don't work in our in our in our type of grounds. Would you would you counter the flame sweep in that situation? Uh, I happily pass priority. Oh uh, no, definitely. Uh, it's just where you have the, the the we like to say like the level one versus the level two, like. You're gonna, you're definitely gonna pass, and we'll call it a flame because maybe my, I need my Esper Sentinel for whatever reason, and like I've lost so many games due to it just because you're sticking to your wits or you're sticking to your sandbag or whatever you want to call it, you're sticking to your morals pretty much, and like I, I just played a game today where um, Zane. I was trying to combo through a Winoda tax board, and I gave Zane the Wish Claw, which he already had win on board, and I cast a Dress Down, um, and he silenced me, and I got instantly salty, and I'm like, I am going to move to my end step and discard a Red Blast <laughs> to the, to the, when he had the Bird Wizard in play, and I will not interact for the rest of the game. Because that is but, instant throwing, and that just sounds salty compared to. That's not okay. See, you call it salty, but I call it. I play to my outskirts, sir. I am getting hit with a six six. I'm getting hit for ten on each turn cycle. You can't want me to answer. So I'm like, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Actually, maybe, you, maybe, you, maybe I'm a salty player and I throw games. You're somebody. actually just taking your frustrations out on Zane right now. Oh, uh, I am. I am. Um, on, on stream. And like, I get it. I support you. I'm with you on it. Zane's right, frustrating maybe. sometimes. <laughs> but you, uh, we have a guest. <laughs> we do have a guest. I apologize. I we, have, it. we have to be nice for company. Uh, Quasar asks in the chat, at what point does it feel safe to combo off? At some points, they might have tossed a combo in hand, but with an already winning board state, is it worth jamming it out? I'll give my answer first, and then I'll give the floor to Greg. Yes, winning is good. And if you are ahead on board and you can protect your if you can protect your win attempt, you should you should win. Winning is good. Hear me out. Hear me out. OK. All right. Picture the picture the situation. Um, you this. have okay. you you have a feeling that some other player has Thorical Consult in hand, right? Mm -hmm. And you you untap, you go to upkeep, you roll for your crypt trigger, right? You have a bunch of shit on board. You're way ahead on board. You draw for turn. Oh, what's this? It's an Imperial Seal, and you have a Gitaxian probe in hand. <laughs> you have a couple options here. You could look for your own Thorical win or your own win con, right? And then probe to draw it and cast it or whatever, right? Looking at the Thorical player's hand, just confirming what he has. Or, or, now hear me out, you could seal for like a Seaborn Muse or a niv it, and then draw that and develop that and then sit for their, another rotation just to, you know, cement your lead um, while making everyone else suffer. There, that's a that was mostly a mostly a joke. But Suffering if you can jam your win when you're on board, if you're way ahead on board and you can go for a win and protect it, then go for it. But if it's like you are ahead on board and you can go for a win, but it's like really dicey and you can only use two pieces of interaction and you'll be tapped out if it doesn't work, it's like you might just want to wait another turn if you think someone else can interact with you to stop you. And they're, you know, they're holding a win on their own turn as well. So um, you're the, from the, the uh, destroy your enemies, see them broken before you and hear the lamentations of their women camp. As far as it comes to winning a CEDH. <laughs> I, I honestly like there isn't a game in control where it's like, damn, like I wish like I went for the win like two turns sooner. 
Yeah. Right. Because once you get that far ahead, your draws are just way better than everyone else's. Right. It, when it's like turn seven and everyone's drawing cards and it's like you're drawing nuts effects, you're drawing the best pieces of interaction, you're drawing the best card advantage, you're drawing like the best cards you could be running because you're you're built to get to that late game. Right. And then your opponents are like, here's a right of flame. Here's a dark ritual. Here's you know, whatever piece, like here's a grinding station for uh, a breach line. You, when you run so many pieces and so many rituals, those are really good off of Nas, but not when I'm just trying to draw cards to get to the late game. Um, and as I, I hope that answered the, the question, but it's like, if, if you, if you feel confident on board that you are way ahead and you can interact to protect your win, go for it. Right. But there is no harm in just waiting another turn. Because if you can interact, your opponents are not winning. Sometimes your opponents interact back. I've had this problem a few times lately because I play Razakats, which is a similarly, similarly mid-range deck. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I will uh, decide to not go off for a turn. I'll, tr I'll, t I'll try to take a break. And then one person will try to resolve ad nauseum. And I have to stop that. And then another person will try to resolve ad nauseum and I can no longer stop the second ad nauseum. It has been my problem a lot lately. So maybe I think it is all about picking your windows. Well, so maybe, maybe you weren't as far ahead as you thought you were. Yeah, I mean, there is that. Like, if you only had enough interaction to stop one win attempt and you decide to pass the turn, that's a different situation than it's like, you know, you're staring at you know, nine cards in hand, and it doesn't even matter what you discard because you could interact with someone basically seven times plus whatever you're drawing from all of your effects. Um, but that would like, be all his. That would be all his common spells, Greg. He only plays seven, so. Oh yeah, so <laughs> we have we have different situations here, right? Because I have no issue triple interacting with win cons uh, most games, but I feel mm. like if you were to triple interact with a win con, you'd have to be stacking your hand. So. Yes. Uh, yes. We have another question. Um, okay. There's a lot of questions coming yeah, today. Lots. Um, what is your thought about Sega River Cutthroat? Oh, don't do not. I will. I will. And that's his ego. It's fine. Why <laughs> are you encouraging him, Shawnee? What, what are your views? What are your views? I love Sega River Cutthroat. Oh, um, there we go. It is. All right, so uh, people that I talk to often will know that I wish I could run Yorion Companion building restrictions for Curious Control, because if I could run a 120-card pile, I would be the <laughs> happiest man alive. Um, it is never going to make it into the, the 100 cards, because I always have like more creative things I want to do. Um, but there's a there was a new Mana Rock spoiled recently that lets you tap a legendary creature to untap it. Um, Relic of yeah. Legends. Yeah, Relic of Legends. That's actually like a really solid card for a Curious Control Legends yeah. build around. Um, there is there is definitely a universe where you you could have um, Sig in that kind of build, or if you're, it, it feels scummy, but if you're playing CDH into a group of people that, you know, don't proxy or play like budget cdh just like cdh without dual lands and stuff you 100 percent should be running sig river cutthroat because you're going to be drawing every time someone fetches for a shock land and it's 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 a card that's best played in like budget control or budget curious control um but it's, it's still a very powerful effect you're gonna be drawing a lot of cards it's a good blocker um you could pitch it to force of will which is the best floor for any blue card to have it's pretty solid Alrighty. Um, chat is active. Clearly we chat need to... Chat is getting wild right wow, now. Like, like, clearly we need Greg here more. Maybe chat we is need... talking about edging right now. And that's yeah, what happens it's... when you bring Greg on. Greg, yeah, it's, it's... Greg has a little sip of whiskey and chat starts talking about edging. I mean, it's, there, there's a lot of stuff going on, but maybe, maybe for another time. But hold on. Maybe I'll pick one of the good ones. Um, I'll answer any question about edging, but um, we might have to take it off Twitch. Yeah, we'd have to okay. take it off Twitch then. <laughs> um, 
If my opponent has a Ranger Captain in place, should I try to jam a win into it, making them crack the Ranger Captain, or let them keep it for their own turn? Uh, Kalua, does that, um, is that question applying to Curious Control or Control in general? Because in Control in general, I would say, um, no? I think we're but talking in... about specifically, like, picking windows and, uh, and making decisions in game. It's, it, so picking windows, um, you can always try the reverse Thoracle thing. It's so funny when it works. But just like, you know, groan, look at your hand, be like, oh, God, this is like not in a great situation. I need to find something and then just taint it packed first. Greg, um, I knew we and, were kindred uh, spirits. I knew no, we were kindred spirits. If if we have some spare time, with, or I, I could tell the story right now about this game. But it was like I, I was having a really rough pod in Curious Control. I was having a horrible matchup. Uh, my friend Sean was playing Bruce Bruce Thrasios, um Evolution or Blue Pod or one of those one of those like really strong decks. Um, there were two different Ranger Captains on board, right? And um, he's got a devoted Druid in play. I think someone or I I like untap, um, upkeep, draw a card, return. I have just lands out maybe like two two mana rocks. I cast a Tainted Pact looking for something, and I forget. Or I don't pay for the Wandering Archaic trigger. So Sean gets a copy of the Tainted Pact, right? And then everyone goes on high alert because it's like, oh my god, he's just going to get Swift Reconfig uh -oh. in the game. Yeah. So everyone just started cracking their Ranger Captains and this massive counterspell war went on the stack. And I was just sitting there like, I have nothing going on, right? <laughs> So all of these Ranger Captains resolve. Sean is sitting there with infinite mana on board, right? Yeah. And can't do anything with it. Um, and Tainted Pact resolves. There goes the deck, and then I just cast Thoracle. Mm -hmm. with everyone completely oh, out of gas. Oh, my god. With double Captains spent. It was like, oh, it was the best feeling. Uh, that is a good feeling. <laughs> but, the backwards console is one of my yeah. favorite things to do. I do it so often that it doesn't work against my friends anymore. Uh, it's so funny, though, because it, it's it's like the one way to win through a ranger captain, right? Yeah. Um, they're, they're just yeah. like, oh, Scotty's Scotty's tainted packing his library away. He's not actually uh, he's not looking for anything. <laughs> OK, mm -hmm. fine. Don't bully me. Wo Woodland deck house in the chat says WTF is up. Denny's. Uh, I wish this was a Denny's. I would kill someone for a grand sandwich right now. Oh, I'm kind of hungry. Um, uh, the hunger uh, is overtaking me. Uh, um, we... So we've gone over a couple questions uh, that I was going to ask just through conversation. Uh, control decks do utilize combo finishes. In fact, yours utilizes two of them, niv Mizzet and a Curiosity Effect or Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation. Uh, uh, We've talked a little bit about the difference between control in 1v1 versus CEDH. We've talked about how you decide what threats to answer. We've talked about um, how you balance your stack interaction and removal, and we've talked about the broadness or narrowness of answers. So I have a couple. I have I have like two more questions for you uh, that are real questions, and then we have the lightning round. Sure. Yeah. So this is this next question is um. In your opinion, what are some cards that every control deck should be running? Uh, the blue color identity at a bare minimum. Okay. I, so I, I, I have this Discord server that I run called the Curio Hub, where mm -hmm. we, not specifically brewing Curious Control, but brewing just reactive and control decks in general, because we think it's an unexplored part of the format. Okay. Um, and I constantly get... Uh, pings and DMs about control decks that are just not running blue. Mm -hmm. And it's like they want, it's not stacks, it's just like a super interactive non blue deck. And it's like that doesn't work. The core identity to control is the fact that it has blue. Um, and the, the only cards that are like the must runs are like Ristic Study and Mindbreak Trap. And really like, nice. I don't care. I know, but I don't care about like any other card in your deck. But if you're running control, you should be on risk study and mindbreak trap at a bare minimum. <laughs> All right, a bare minimum. Okay, a bare in, minimum. In, interesting. Um, I've especially enjoyed. Sorry, go ahead. 
No, go, no, you, you go. I've especially enjoyed the trend of running more and more free interaction lately. I've seen it even in the, even in the proactive decks. They're starting to run like Deadly Rollick in Mindbreak Trap and all those yeah, pieces I've of interaction. Yeah, I've actually blown out way too many times by Connor's, uh, my, or Connor's Deadly Rollick in his <laughs> Grixis Malcolm list. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm never expecting that deck to have a piece of removal. But. I too have eaten, I too have eaten dirt because of that Deadly Rollick from Connor. So, uh, Shani, yeah. what were you saying, my friend? Is there room for pet cards in control? Or is card quality king? So, this is a weird question directed towards um, me specifically, because I, I have this opinion that you you cannot improve decks without running pet cards. Um, like, there, you cannot innovate decks without running pet cards. Mm -hmm. Um if you if you only run like what the general community thinks is great or you only run like what people before you have run you're never going to like get anywhere when working on a list you have to try something new um and okay. it the the issue is when you get hyper fixated and you only run pet cards and then it's like i have 15 pet cards in this deck and it's not functioning um but in a control list like my i never run my primer list when i'm playing i think i'm always like five or six cards off on whatever the hell yeah. i have on my desk um it, i'm just trying new things constantly um because it's the only way to determine whether or not they're actually playable i agree so, i agree uh, with that statement and you know, pet cards like I ran inventive iteration for a couple months and it was like the card's not great, but it's hilarious when it works um, and no one sees it coming and no one even knows what it does. Um, but I do not. So you're correct. Uh, so inventive iteration. It's a it's a horrible four mana saga. Um, it's 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 four mana. And then the first age or first counter or whatever is a bounce something bounce a creature yeah. uh and then you draw a card or then you sorry second one is you return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand and if you can't return an artifact you draw a card and then the third is you transform it and it transforms into this three three that is sanctum prelate but it changes every time you cast a spell so interesting it, it it flips right and then i cast like an arcane signet and pass the turn and a trigger goes on the stack when i cast arcane signet and if that trigger resolves Opponents cannot cast two drops until I untap. Nice. Wow. Huh. <laughs> it's, it's so funny <laughs> because it's like I I don't need to burn the counter spells in my hand if I can just go signet pass, right? And then it's like, okay, great. Now you can't Thoracle. Now you can't Underworld Breach. I don't care if you resolve an Ad Nauseam at this point, right? Because what are you going to do? You're going to draw your entire deck and then you can't win. Even if you remove me from the game, you can't win. Because that effect goes away when I would effectively untap. Um, oh. It, oh, wow. That is... I actually had that in a game before where I I had flipped it and then I shut off one, twos, and threes. Uh, passed the turn, immediately died to some combat damage thing. And then the next two players after that couldn't combo off because the effects were still going until I would untap in turn order. And then the first guy untapped in one, because he was the first person to untap without having half of his deck shut off. Huh. If like if you go, go look at any CDH decklist database list right now and look at the curve and just imagine how impactful it is to have all oh, yeah. your, your twos yeah. shut off, right? Yeah, it's a sure. large portion of your deck. Yeah. Um, the issue is it just takes so long to set up because, you know, it's a it's a four mana saga, and then you need to wait two turns before it actually flips. Um, yeah. But but sagas are fairly unexplored. Um, there there are a lot of sagas that I think should be seeing play in commander and or in in competitive commander, and they aren't seeing play. So. Mm. That's fair enough. I I do like um testing cute cards. Also, like I think Scott and I Scott is a little more on the cuteness than I am, but, like, Jitte was, like, a good, a big thing for me back right, in the I, time. I am much cuter than you are, you're right. Okay, yes, yes, I agree. But I like Jitte, yeah, testing cards to see if things are playable or not, just to, because that's how we can, like, eventually keep getting better decks or better deck strategies. So, yeah, I agree with that. 
Right. Scott, be- Greg, it's almost it's almost nine p.m. It's it's ten of nine pretty much right now. Okay. Um, do we so want to start doing some of those lightning round questions? Or? It's time the lightning round, Greg. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Chat, uh, we're going to hold off on questions for Greg. Greg, uh, I, I'm sure we'll tell you about where to ask him these questions um, yourself in the future uh, at the end when we give him a second to say goodbye. Um, Greg, what are you obsessing over recently? Uh, in life? Anything. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's the the podcast that I've been working on. I've Excellent. spent way too much time uh, animating and working on screens and finding music. Actually, I way too much fucking time on that. Um, and I don't know how that's going to turn out. Um, I. Uh, I. We're talking to the general internet, but uh, I met this I met this girl at the start of my semester, and she was you know motivated me to chase my dreams and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know what, that's great. Like I'm actually going to commit to this because I I made a bunch of graphics for a podcast last fall, but never got around to starting it because I was like, I don't want to commit all this time. I don't want like I don't I don't want to do this all by myself because it's it's so much work. Um, but then recently, it's like I. You know, I can stay up extra late and do homework or I can wake up at like four o'clock and do homework in the morning. Yeah. Um, but I can I can spend, you know, some afternoons working on this project. So, nice. cool. yeah, I've been I've just been hyper fixated over that that podcast recently. Do you have socials or anything set up for that yet? Uh, I have no socials set up. I was just going to link it to my current Twitter account. Cool. Um, uh, just because I think it would just make everything easier. But. Cool. Cool. Is it a uh, video podcast or a? Uh, it'll be strictly audio. the okay. The format that I'm working on right now is it'll be kind of like a what we what we did here basically, um, where it'll probably just be me and somebody else, and we'll just chat for like forty minutes to an hour and talk about decks. Um, I really want to do intense breakdowns on reactive stuff because I don't think people are really like yeah. playing it or brewing with it. Um, Nice. So that's that's that. Um, I hope that that uh, I mean, I'm sure it will. If you put half of the thought that you put into Curious Control into the podcast, you're going to do very, very good. Yeah. Um. Keeps the life. Yeah. Uh, so uh, next question. Um, mm-hmm. What other games do you play that aren't Magic the Gathering? If uh, any. I play... God, I I play um Apex Legends is okay. like my my go to evening video game. All right. Um, Who's your main? And uh, I play Gibraltar. Okay. Uh, the, right. the dude with the shield. Yep. Because um, he's he's cool. I play um, Pathfinder when I play. Oh yeah, Pathfinder's sweet. But yeah, I've been a Gibraltar main recently. I've been playing Across the Obelisk with my uh, my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, We've been doing runs like once a week or once or twice a week. Um, nice. Which is fun. I but saw some I, people playing that earlier, so it seems really cool. Yeah, it's a really cool game. I actually think that um, people who enjoy magic, specifically competitive uh, commander, would enjoy playing uh, Across the Obelisk. Nice. Because there are a lot of decisions to make, and you can kind of do some fun combo-y things. So. Awesome. Um, yeah. Next question. If you had you've played some magic that isn't CEDH, what's your favorite deck that you've played in Magic the Gathering period? Um The answer, by the way, can be curious control here. Like if it is. It it can be, but it's not. Okay. I briefly I it is the only modern deck that I still have sleeved up, but I haven't updated it since the Euro banning. Um, it is Crabvine. Um, okay. okay. Tell I'll, me about I'll Crabvine. On, I'll die on this hill that Vengevine is the best magic card ever printed in flavor context. Okay. 
uh, or it, in I I love magic cards that are that you can pull straight out of the pack your first day playing magic and look at it and be like, huh, this is like a pretty decent card, right? And then you can be playing magic for 10 years and pull a card straight out of the pack and it's a Venge and it's like, yeah, this card is like disgusting and you can do degenerate things with it. Yeah. Um, and there are a couple cards. Uh, Mirage Mirror is another good one where it's like the floor is incredibly high and the ceiling is so much higher. Um, I just love those cards. But yeah, Crabvine. Uh, Crabvine. Great deck. It just looks it looks to get that silly crab out and then some fetch lands and you mill everything and uh, hedron yeah. crab or whatever he drawn he drawn yeah. crab i i haven't played the deck in months nice that's cool though i like i like wild 60 card brews i think that's pretty cool um okay yeah. uh so uh you have the podcast going on are you involved mm -hmm. in any other projects right now um not really not in any like big ones. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. If people are looking for someone to contribute to their project, do you want to be? Sure. I um, would not mind contributing to projects. Um, okay. Yeah. Lastly, Greg, we have um, the most important question that we ask every guest, and Ashani hates. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Greg. In your opinion, what's the sexiest soup? Ooh, oh my god. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um the sexiest soup? The sexiest soup. And why? I was really caught off guard here. Guard here. Mm -hmm. Um I am I really like um, Italian wedding soup. Okay. Uh, That's a good answer. It's a really good soup, and it's a really good answer. What pasta um, shape do you prefer in your Italian wedding soup? Tubes uh, or the dots? The tubes. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's nostalgic for me because my uh, my dad around the holidays every year will make like uh, 10 or 12 gallons of Italian soup and just nice. leave it in the fridge when it's snowing or leave it in the, the garage when it's snowing out so it stays nice and cold there. And nice. we'll just eat that on and off for like months. That's um, great. I like that. Yeah. Italian wedding soup is amazing. It's, uh, it's nice and hearty. Awesome. Okay. Those are all the questions I have for you, except this final one, Greg. Mm -hmm. If people want to find you on the internet, where should they go? Uh, you can go to at Curious Control on Twitter. I'm there. I'm not really on any of the other social medias like Instagram or Facebook. Um, okay. I do. I have permission to post links in chat. You uh, should. I don't think the bot will eat them. Okay. Well, I just posted a link to the Curio Hub, which is the Discord server that we have dedicated to building reactive and you know, control decks and whatnot. We awesome. we will look at uh, turbo lists and brew that if people want to discuss that in there. But most of the people who are in there know how to build reactive and control and will help to build reactive and control. Um, awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, Very cool. But, but that's that. And that might be going through some rebranding because the Curio Hub was made. Um, it's... It might be changing to something else. So, but right now it's it's that. Did my Discord freeze? I think it did. It froze with me looking real stupid. There we go. All right. Um. Thank you, everyone, uh, for tuning in. Thank you, Greg, specifically for joining us and having quite a long chat with us. And we really appreciate that. And it was also really cool to have you in the first half of the program. Uh, chatting with us about the CEDH subreddit stuff. It was uh, I was so glad that you were uh, able to join us tonight because uh, big big fan of Greg, big fan of what's going on. So uh, everybody go follow Greg on Twitter at Curious Control. Uh, Please, actually, I need to get to a thousand followers before Kevin does. So okay, so let's 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 make sure that that gets said. Yeah.
there is a contest going on right now or a blood feud i guess not a blood mm-hmm. feud there's a contest between uh just kev's will and i okay um we're both locals and um whoever gets to a thousand followers first uh wins a six pack and i think there's also a little caesar's pizza on the line so yeah i believe there's a little caesar's pepperoni pizza on the line yeah so it's like this is like super important guys um if if i can get to a thousand first like how many followers are you are you at right now uh so i think i am fighting an uphill battle at the moment i am at navigate twitter uh, I'm at 874 at the moment. Okay, all right. And, and Kev, Kev's ahead of me. He's at like 917 or something. Okay, all right. But, yeah. Well, let's get let's get Greg at least to matching Kevin followers. Um, and I believe Kalua, you say in the chat, if you need followers, do giveaways. There was an express written agreement to do no giveaways for this for this contest. I saw that agreement yeah. being made. No yeah, giveaways. There- there are no giveaways allowed for this contest, um, which is unfortunate, but that's the yeah the way it'd be. Uh, All right, well, everyone go follow Greg. If you don't follow Greg right now, we're not friends anymore. I'm sorry. Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you from all of us here at Eminence MTG, and especially us on Eminence TV right now, myself and Ashani. And Greg, thank you for joining us in the chat. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thank you for the subs. From Helenium and and Bonnie and and Kalua Lua and Rager Fridge, thank you for the subs. Thank you for all the followers tonight. We're gonna be back here next week, same bat time, same bat channel. Ashani, where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter as Ashani. You can find me on Facebook as Ashani Miller and Discord as Jamaican Dude. And I'm on Twitter yeah. at It's Me Scoots. And uh, that's pretty much the only place I am. All righty. Uh, okay. Thank you, everybody. And we're going to go bye bye now. Have a good Monday and enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.